Hello, this is a little uh, animation I made in iClone, and I then exported the set, which is very minimal, and the camera animation so that I could further enhance it, both with some color correction and 3D particles in Blackmagic's Fusion. Here they are. Now, this is pretty simple, but I thought it would be a good thing to demo. So first up, I made this little animation in iClone, really just to do a demo, nothing fancy. Um, and the idea was, we've got a ground plane pedestal and a tabletop here, and of course character, but he's not involved with the particles, so we only need to export the geometry for these three things. And we don't even need to worry about this animation because First of all, obviously, we render this scene out as uh, image sequence, and I always do um, PNG um, or targets or whatever is available as image sequence at 24 frames a second because uh, when you work in film and TV, that's what you do. So render that. Then choose your bits and pieces that you're going to export and export the FBX. And when that's done, we then export the camera. And that's enough of iClone. And no. Okay, here we are in Fusion. So I'm going to make a new composition because you need to see what you'd be faced with if you just start Fusion up. Always starts with two screens and your flow area, which is where all the work happens. So the first thing we need to do is import your FBX. So under the file menu, import FBX scene. Click on that. I've got my set ready to go. Open. OK. So a couple things to check. These are all going to be fine. Convert. Up to y axis, uh, up axis to y. Uh, I think that's default, but if not, you make sure that's correct. And I like to scale the units by 0.1 because Fusion's world space is different than iClones and pretty much everybody else's. So this just makes it more manageable. And I also have the resampling rate at 24. And normally you would start, because I've got documents open, it's saying merge into existing document, which is fine. So I'll say OK. And in it goes. Now there's a bunch of ways to display what you've actually got. The easiest is to actually just grab the node and drag it into the window. And when you let go, there it is. Now we only want one display, so let's just make this a little bit bigger. And up here, you can choose a couple of presets. You can make whatever you like, but we'll go with that. And again, we're looking at something very closely here. So let's hit the Fit button. And what you can see is a perspective of the pedestal and the floor. I don't know what's going on with the textures here, but we're not really worried about them because we're just using this as a reference for where the particles are going to go in the scene. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do then is actually delete these textures. Everything goes white. Um, for some reason, I've got an extra root node in there. Don't need that. So what we've got here is a default shader, which should be attached to all three. And that's the pink attachment there. And you'll know when you try to attach, if you right click and drag to here and let go, it shows you what can connect to. And in this case, it can only connect to materials. So if I try and connect it to the orange one, it doesn't go because that's for something else. So there we go. So they've all got this default material on here, which is white, which looks awful. So what I'm going to do is detach these two. And I am going to just change the colors a little bit. Let's make that a reddish color. OK, copy and paste. Shoot. Copy, click on, the, on an empty space, and that's where the paste will go. 
and drag it to the pink input and let's change this to green copy or I can just paste again because I still have it in the buffer and the pink and we'll change this one to like a blue color and like I said this is just so we can see what's going on the other thing I usually do is th hit the light on the viewer here it's just like a um, um, generic lighting setup it doesn't get rendered it's just there so you can actually see that there's some shape otherwise everything looks flat shaded okay um, navigation tools are different so we won't go through all of those but there are tons of tutorials online to get your head around fusion uh, what's great is it's a very powerful 3d engine even though it's a compositing program um, and it works very well so what what we have here is these are the your materials or shaders these are the geometry and fact and then these are um, secondary uh, transforms if you like so that you can move the geometry around because the geometry all comes in the same spot and these put them where they belong um, and then the root node is actually like your whole scene so if I view that like if I drop just the pedestal in or just the top of the mesh or the floor you see I can view everything individually the root takes all everything in the scene and that includes cameras and lights whatever and they all go to there and normally it's actually called the 3d merge but for some reason the the export from FBX makes it come call up as a root node so uh, the next thing I want to do here is bring our camera in so let me give me some little bit more space just click off that and import FBX scene this time I'm gonna bring the camera in open now all we've got to watch for here same details exactly merge into existing document okay and what we get is the camera with its own root node so in other words it's got its own scene because of course it's been exported separately so we don't need that let's disconnect it and delete it and instead we'll attach the camera to this scene so what that has just given us the opportunity to do is right click on the view and I can look through the camera and hit play and got an animation um, we've only got 24 frames at the moment because the first thing I loaded didn't have any animation on it so it didn't set the time um, I know that it's 719 frames because I have done a little test <laughs> and off we go should look a little familiar okay so there's a weird little click uh, jump at the beginning which I'm gonna have to blame iClone at the moment because uh, there's no other explanation for it since that exported it if I select the camera and I go to spline and then select and activate this I can see um, all the curves of the camera move and if I turn these all off and just look at the focal length and get my little magnifying glass here well, I, well some things don't work when I'm doing a screen capture okay uh, uh huh there we go right so I can see the focal length there's a couple of frames of animation which shouldn't be it should all be 35 mil so the easiest way to do that select those two dodgy frames delete them now everything from 0 on is 35 and we don't get that jump anymore and okay. all right so here's the animation and it all looks good 
next we want to load our footage in. So up here, there's some shortcuts. They're a little bit cryptic because I want to get a lot of stuff in for the space. LD is loader, SV is saver, BG is background, so on and so on. So loader, I have Pinhead Jones HD here. Up in. Now I want to see that. I just drop it up like that. And here's the footage of the scene. So ideally, I want to see this and this together. Well, this is live view. So I can view perspective. I can view front and top and so on, which is not going to really be very helpful at the moment. Um, this is your working area. This is not actually the output of the scene. We, we do have a camera, so the best thing we want to do is actually look through the camera. But we actually need to set up a render node. And again, cryptically, 3RN is 3D render. So if I drag that in there now, now we actually see it's flat shaded. And it is our scene. And you can see now it's slower because it's needing to render those frames in. Um, it goes quicker if we change the renderer type to OpenGL. A lot quicker. <laughs> and this should look pretty much like our footage, which it does. So what I'm going to do here is take the output of the renderer, and I want to merge it over the actual footage footage so we can see them together. And the easy way to do that is to drag from there to the output of this footage layer. And when you let go, it's created a merge. So I drag the merge into the viewer and it's showing me the top layer. And this is the bottom layer of that merge. So, and if you haven't noticed yet, but everything I select gets its controls opened on this side here. So select the merge and I can change the blend amount and I can see they line up perfectly. So just check it a few places. Right, so it's all good. So now what we know is we can confidently move forward knowing that whatever we do in this 3D scene will fit with the footage. And that's what this is all about. So let's go to around frame 400. And I'm going to set a mark, uh, the input to 400 so that I don't keep going back to the beginning. Okay, so let's look at the root node again, which is the 3D merge or scene. And instead of looking at it through the camera, I'm going to look at it in perspective view. That way I can manipulate it without uh, being constrained. The camera's locked. It comes in. When you bring in an animation, it automatically locks it, which is a good thing, but you can unlock it there. Right, so what we want to do now is create a ring of particles around this. And the best way to do that is actually to use another piece of geometry as the particle generator. So let us start with a 3D shape, which I'm going to pipe into the scene, which is the root node. At the moment, you can't see it because this thing's on top of it. But I'm going to cha change it from plain to torus or donut. <laughs> make the radius bigger. There it is. I'm going to make the section thinner. Make the radius smaller. Like that. Now we can just drag this up and have a little pan around. Have a, see what we got going on there. And that way, we're basically just outside the base. And if we look in here, you can see where I've added it. Um, let's go back to the root node. Okay, so now what we want to do is use that to generate particles. So the particle emitter is here. And you always need a particle renderer after it. It's just, I don't know why they don't come together because you can't actually do one without the other. So there you are. Um, let's just drop the particle emitter in on its own. And you can see it's actually really small here. 
but um, if I select particle emitter and controls and turn the velocity up, you can see it's generating particles, shooting them off in that direction. I can make the, um, I'm going to change them to blobs. So that way they're a little easier to see. And the region is the particles where they're coming out of. In this case, there's a sphere here. So if I hit play, you'll see. And the reason they run out here is because that's their life basically over. So we can shorten that anyway. Let's go to 50. Oops, I got a thumpy sound from the keyboard. And I'm going to put some variance on the lifespan, say 25. That way they're not all lasting exactly 50 frames. Um, the velocity sets how quickly they're generated out of the uh, emitter. And let's use it 0 0.5 to start with. And I'm going to put the velocity variance to 0 0.2. And what that does is similar to the lifespan variance. It makes them um, slightly different speeds. And obviously, the more you go, the bigger it gets. So that's fun stuff for later. OK, but the thing is, we don't want the sphere as a generator. We want that geometry. So the way to do that is grab your emitter and change the region from sphere to mesh. When you do that, a little orange arrow appears on the side, which means you can now input something. And since we have something we made earlier handy, here we go, this shape 3D here, which I can call um, Taurus EM, Taurus emitter. And I just drag that into that. So if we look at particle renderer now, there we are. Ah, uh, but they're still going sideways. That's easily fixed. So in the particle emitter itself, controls, uh, the angle is at zero, which is basically going along X. So let's put it to 90. Now it's going up Y. And that actually looks kind of cool. But I'm going to put the angle variance up as well. Let's go to 360. Now they're going everywhere, which means the velocity probably needs to come right down. There we go. And the, ver and the variance. So that's kind of um, kind of the effect that I was showing earlier. Well, it's the start anyway, the beginnings of. Now, how do we get this to the rest of the scene? Well, particle render is 3D, just like geometry. So it can pump straight into the scene as well. And if we look at the scene complete, there we are, particles and the ring. Now, of course, we don't want anything but the particles. And this is what's really great about node-based systems is you can have multiple, well, like you can see already, I've got the, the um, torus attached to both the scene and the emitter, and I can detach it and they stay there because the torus is still feeding the emitter. But I'm going to leave that because it doesn't we're not using this anyway, so it's just nice to have the reference. So what I am going to do is branch this render to its own 3D render node, which is select that 3D render. And if I do this, well nothing there. That's because we don't have the camera information. So if I take the output of the camera and drag it to the output of the particle renderer, I get a new merge 3D. 
and when I look through the renderer, I'll make sure I select the camera, although it looks correct. So now this renderer is just in space. So if I substitute that input to go over our footage, that merge, let me see what happens. So now we have particles where we want them, which is good. And looking at this, I would say that we need to do a couple of things for fun. Let's turn the rate up a bit to 0.2 and see what we got. I think we need a bit more turbulence as well. So particles basically have modifiers. Let's just make some room here. And this is why people get intimidated by no base because they do get look complicated, but it's just a map. I mean, it's a schematic basically. It's just everything that everything you would do in normal controls is just laid out in a map and we can always follow the strings. Um so here we go. So the particle emitter selected. I go to tools and under particles, I'm going to choose turbulence. So just adding that is going to create a lot more movement. I'm going to put the values up to, let's go to 0 0.5 for all three X, Y, and Z. And hit play. Yeah, you're not really seeing it. Let's what, crank it up. Okay. Because these are quite random, the particles is not actually as noticeable. If I if I had not done this, and the particles were just going straight up, you would see the turbulence there's actually I think I even prefer that so let's not bother with that other <laughs> thing um, so it looks a little bit more like you know smoky fiery thing going on and then the other thing we can do of course is increase the number so let's say go up to 25 particles per second that looks better and right now all the particles are the same size and that's boring so under particle emitter I'm going to go to style and size controls so I can make them all bigger I'm going to make that like this and then I'm going to use the size over life tool here and I'm going to just drag that down put a little curve on it and what that does is over life they get smaller. And with the random, um, with the variance in the lifespan, it just makes it all look a little bit more interesting. Okay, so the next thing actually, I don't want the particles on just to pop on like that. So the, the skull thing stops spinning at frame 480. So what we're going to do is actually turn the particles off completely here. And the way we, and it's because we're going to animate it. So you just right click on the number, animate, and then bring it down to zero, no particles. And then 20 frames later, just type in a new value, 25, because it's green. It's, all, it's in auto key mode now. So between 480 and 500, it'll go from 0 to 25 particles per second. Well, it's more than that. It's just a rate, flow, something. That's cool. And then as it's playing, and notice how, how this is, you know, that's footage rendering and particles over top of it. Notice how uh, responsive the system is. Honestly, there are very few systems that can do this and I know I've <laughs> worked with all of them okay so a frame 600 I'm gonna set another keyframe 
and I'm going to go one frame forward and make it to zero. And what will happen there is all the particles generated on frame 600 will just live out their lives, but no new particles will be created. So the result will be they fade out. Okay, so we're getting there. The last thing, really, we want to add a little bit more flair to it because that looks doesn't look very good. Looks quite gray, actually. So, back to the particle emitter. I'm going to change the color. Open the color controls. I can just grab the pick tool and sample colors off the screen. Let's go with the or uh, the gold color and. I am now going to spice it up with a bit more gain and glow. So if you look here, what we've got going on is we've got the renderer. Let's put this over black. We've rendered our particles through this renderer here, which actually I should have it on OpenGL because things will run even faster. Um, I know that I need to put this to quick sort, otherwise I'll get some artifacts. And we have the footage, and we merge this over the footage, and it's just normal at the moment, but I could, um, oh, and it's still, sorry, this is the, why it looks so boring. The blend is still down from earlier when I was had them half mixed. And I kind of feel like we want to make them glow. So select the output of this this is footage now now that it's been rendered this is basically like footage going over top of this footage so it means that any sort of tools that would work on footage now can work in between these whether it's color corrector or glow and i'm going to add their legendary soft glow and drop that in here and right away you can see something happen. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, so I'm going to increase the gain. Make the glow size smaller. Bring the threshold down a bit. That's I don't know, right? Well, let's, I want the glow size even smaller. Here's a tip. If you want to really move small values, you hold control down while you're changing the values. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, back to here. No particles. Ding, 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 ding. That's pretty good. I think we've got too many particles. I'm going to just go into the emitters spline number and this value here. I'm going to put that down to say 15. And I'm also going to increase the velocity because they seem a little lackluster 0.5 is going to throw them there we go so it's looking pretty good I would say a soft glow needs a bit more impact like that and in my emitter color instead of just using that gold just straight up gold I can change with color variants I can vary any of the three or four channels of color setting a range and what that does is it sort of randomizes 
between these values. So if I added a lot of green, say, you would see it a little more dramatic. So now we've got kind of red and gold, like different temperatures, hot particles. Okay, preview, play, sorry, I'm not even previewing, this is real time. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Oh, and of course, because they kicked off, they keep moving in the direction they were heading, which is all good. Let's fit that so you can see what's going on. Now, this is a, a pretty simple example. Um, of course, the thing about this particle system is, is you can let your imagination com run completely wild. Um, you can generate particles from basic shapes like a sphere or a cube or a rectangle. You can generate them from a uh, between two points, like on a line, and you can also generate them from geometry, which is, of course, huge. Um, and you can generate them from a bitmap. So if I wanted, if I had a brought in this as a high contrast image, I could have the particles emitting from the, the white bits of the image. So there's a lot you can do um, with this system. And there's all sorts of tools, like if you look in the, the particles here, I've got avoid, bounce, changing styles, you got sp spawning particles, uh, you got your forces like gravity. In fact, why don't we do that? Why don't we just add um, a bit of gravity on as well? So directional force, oops, went in the wrong place. There we go. So now the gravity's pushing down even though the particles are being born, they're heading upwards. So <laughs> they're probably just gonna fight each other. But who says that gravity has to go down? Let's go to the side and bring the power up. So how's this? See that? So the directional force now is blowing the particles off in that direction. Fun, right? Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do, so this is the merge where it's all happening. I'm actually going to add a filmlet that I had handy that I prepared earlier. Pinhead, where is it? Documents. There we go. Attach that. Look at that. That's a little more dramatic with the Hollywood lighting. Set our render range. And then add a saver. Oh, let's do an MP4. Save. Okay. And then I just hit render, choose the frame range, go, and off it goes. So this is rendering, you know, consider my, my computer is doing a screen capture at the moment as well. This is what a render looks like with something like this is actually very respectable. In fact, let me make this uh, bigger. Can I do full screen here? Yeah. The other thing you may have noticed is I pretty much, Fusion can be running while you do things. Like I literally left the particles running while I made changes. Most anything that's done in the pro world, whether it's for CG animation or 
um, visual effects for live action, um, nothing's ever done all in one software. There's always, you know, everybody's a specialist and that's just the way to go. And this gives you a lot more control as well, ultimately, unless you need, you know, interaction between the character and the device, say he was throwing particles at it. Well, that's a different story. But, you know, again, there are ways to do that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little insight. And um, yeah, we'll see you again.